Good morning, everyone. I hope you had a wonderful weekend and that you're staying safe and healthy. I'd like to go over the upcoming week. We're going to dive into chapter 15. It is um, uh, nearing the end of our unit on monetary policy. So earlier in chapter 12, we looked at what money is, the three characteristics. We talked about the banking system. Last chapter in chapter 13, you looked at the Fed, and uh, this week we're going to put it all together and look at how monetary policy operates. So we're going to be skipping chapter 14 and diving right into 15. A bit of a recap from last week, um, what I was hoping that you would get out of the discussion gathering those prices is really giving you a sense of how our consumer price index is calculated. Um, of course, we only took a very small market basket of 10 goods, but I think it gave you some insight, I hope, into how we make those calculations. So you've mastered that, but also it can give us some insight into what it means uh, uh, for individuals' wealth. So some of you all identified a very small or even negative increase in prices or was dominated by the change in like cat food or something like that. But even if prices over a three month period of time go up by 1%, that begins to compound over the course of a year, or two years, or three years. So um, if prices rise by 3%, the question we have to ask, did people's wages also increase by 3%? If not, then we're all a little bit worse off. So I hope uh, it was an interesting project. We may or may not. I would like to return to it, but I've got some other things that I'd like to do this semester as well with you. So I'm hoping you got something out of it, and I hope it was worth your time. Uh, before we dive into what you need to do this week, I just wanted to uh, take a quick look at what's happening in the macro economy. Lots of interesting things. We've just had an election, um, uh, but independent of the le election, there's a lot going on in the economy. So um, I pulled up from Fred. This is the Federal Reserve's uh, economic website. And I pulled up the unemployment rate. And you're seeing all these different colors here. It's showing what's happened in the last year. And uh, the dark blue line here at the bottom is the overall unemployment rate. And then the other colors show um, I pulled up black men. I pulled up high school graduates with no college degree. Um, uh, 25 years and over. I picked up uh, Hispanic and Latino and then women. And so if you can capture what's happening, you can see we peaked out a little while ago back in April, um, pushing uh, nearly 20% uh, unemployment rate for some groups. And you can see things have obviously stabilized. If you were watching the news, you saw the new unemployment rate came out for October. We're down to 6.9%, which is still much higher, obviously, than where we were back in February before the pandemic hit. But you can also see that uh, demographically, there's still some distinction in, in these various groups. So obviously, if you don't have a college degree, you're impacted more. If you're African-American, you're more likely to be unemployed. So I thought this was interesting to look at. Um, we're hoping that trend keeps going down. But of course, we're seeing a climb in the COVID rate. So a lot of economists are saying, well, we may have plateaued a little bit. Um, other uh, news that I wanted to give you a look at is uh, real gross domestic product, and that also came out recently, third quarter figures. And for the third quarter, things grew at a rate of 33%. Now that's balanced out that it had dropped by 33%. So that means over the course of the year, you know, what's going to happen? We still have one more quarter and it's going to be a big one. So people are really looking at what's going to happen with the virus, whether economies are able to stay open, etc. Last thing I wanted to show you, and this is going to segue into what we're talking about now this week, is the uh, Federal Reserve Bank and monetary policy. And uh, the Federal Reserve Bank does a lot of stuff. They advise the Congress, they advise the President on economic action, but essentially they operate, as you know, monetary policy. Their chief way of doing that is through open market operations, where they influence the overall interest rate in the economy. Uh, what they influence most what they when you hear the Federal Reserve Bank targeting a low or high unemployment rate we're talking about the federal funds rate and you're taking a look at this over the course of the last uh, 70 years 65 years actually and you can see a lot of crazy things going on back in um, uh, 2000 
uh, we hit historical lows for this uh, federal funds rate. It climbed back up, but then the Fed was very active during the 2008 crisis, as you'll learn, dropping this on a, this rate down to zero. And we had been ratcheting that rate back up, but right now what you're seeing is a very low federal funds rate. And we're gonna study what this number is all about. Um, uh, currently, the Fed is back in the news. Here's a, uh, a sampling of an article from the news uh, in the last day or two. This is Jerome Powell. He's uh, appointed by the president to serve as the chair of the Fed. He has two more years on his term. Uh, and Biden will have the choice of renominating him or not. Um, but he's a very stable guy. I think he would. He is Republican, but often that doesn't matter in, uh, if you have a Democratic president. But what they're saying is they're going to keep this Federal Reserve interest rate, the federal funds rate, at uh, records low. So basically at 0%. And we're going to talk about how they do that where it all comes from and what it all means. All right, so let's take a look at what we've got to do this week. Um, you have a typical array of things. I've got a discussion for you to do on Wednesday, three replies by Friday. You've got a pre-class question, quiz, and two aptly of problem sets. I think the work is a little more challenging, so I'm gonna be working on producing a couple videos to help you through uh, some of the problems. Those I'll be getting up in the next couple days, I hope. Um, but I want to uh, point out the discussion here, and it's to play a, a game, actually. And uh, there, uh, you're gonna have a link to a game, and there are a few questions for you to follow up. But essentially, you're gonna be the Fed chairman, and uh, if you go to the lesson for chapter 15, and uh, go to the chair of the Fed game link right here. And whoop, you got to follow that link to the chair of the Fed game. Here we go. And it's just a kind of it's it's a a, a bit of a, a challenging game to play. But uh, your job is to uh, play around with the federal funds rate and then see how that affects unemployment and inflation. Our economic model. Um, making a lot of noise in the background there. Our economic, economic model is going to explain how the federal funds rate impacts the price level, the unemployment rate, and GDP. And so I think this will give you some uh, in into how it all works. So I hope you enjoy it. I want you to talk a little bit about what your impressions are, what you learned about it. But I think the game is a fun way to kind of connect with the material that we're going to be working on in this class. So if you have any questions, let me know. I hope you all have a great week. I'll be seeing you in the discussion board trying to reply to your responses to help you better understand how monetary policy works. So I hope everyone has a great week again, and I'll see you soon.